My name is Kira De Caroli. Hi, we're Martin and Chloe from Contaset. We're early stage quantum investors. Hello everyone, my name is Mehdi Bozoré and I'm Chief Revenue Officer at District de Quantum Innovation Zone in Quebec. Bonjour. Hi everyone. My name is Gaël Berg from Ping and today I'm glad to share with you my point of view about the future of quantum computing and I would like to thank Quantum Insider for giving us the opportunity. work at Redstone as an investment manager on our newly launched uh, quantum fund. My background is actually in quantum computing hardware development um, and with that I'm going to try to come up with my predictions for 2024 even though predictions are extremely hard. My first prediction is that we're going to see uh, an increased awareness of the quantum threat um, and we're going to see more efforts towards standardization policy around this topic with organizations starting to migrate towards quantum safe solutions. Well, we think that this number one challenge will be for the quantum industry to move past the hype it has received over the past two years without losing the interest of the broader community. I am actually in a building called EQ1 for Espace Quantique 1, a quantum research and development center. This is one of the first projects of the Quantum Innovation Zone and focuses on accelerating the R&D process for companies who usually need to invest heavily in infrastructure. This is one of the first challenges that we are solving, making hardware-focused R&D affordable. In other words, don't spend your funding on building your own infrastructure, just come here rent it so you can hire more people to accelerate even more your R&D processes. Predicting the future of quantum computing can actually be pretty hazardous uh, because it involves considering always evolving trends, technological breakthrough, and a lot of industry investment actually. Um, for instance, there are more than $30 billion that have been invested over the last few years on a technology with such a low level of maturity. First of all, Increase integration with classical computing system. As the quantum computing will mature, we'll likely see more integration of quantum processors with classical system. Uh, it will lead us to an hybrid approach that will enable more practical application of quantum computing and will allow the industry and the researchers to leverage the quantum computing over few specific tasks within the larger classical computing workflow. My second prediction is around seeing uh, increased number of mergers and acquisitions in the quantum technology space. Uh, we're gonna, we've already witnessing some of this happening uh, in, in early 2024, but we're gonna see more established players uh, looking after the, the interesting up and coming startups as targets. The third prediction um, is really about hopefully seeing a glimpse of uh, being able to solve uh, a commercially uh, useful use case on quantum computers uh, better than on classical computers. I think we're at the place now that uh, the community as a whole is having the pressure to uh, start delivering uh, economic value to the clients and to the investors. Um, so us as quantum specialized uh, investors, we understand the long timeline that it comes uh, to invest in, in startups and scale-ups in, in quantum, but in order to have uh, the massive influx of capitals and also the adoption needed to make sure that the industry keeps on going, well, I think we'll need to, uh, to start reinventing the business model. Now, even if we overcome challenges on the hardware side, we also need a seamless interaction between multiple software layers. These layers still need to be built and efficiently integrated. This is why software companies are also coming to EQ1 and work closely with quantum hardware providers. Let's say all this is done, perfect. We also need to scale both hardware and software, including control in order to make sure we reach a point where this combo can deliver meaningful value from an end customer perspective. So now of all, um, the quantum computing as a service. Um, the cloud-based approach of quantum computing will likely continue to grow. Um, that's where we, 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 we see uh, the technology to go. And it will give accessibility uh, to the researchers and the industrial players without the need to own your own hardware, actually. So it will democratize the access to the quantum computing and it will foster experiments. Um, third of all, uh, the quantum software and the algorithm. As the hardware will progress, will be an increased focus on the development of the quantum uh, software and the algorithm that will run efficiently on the available quantum computers. 
So the quantum development kit will be more than ever at the heart of this effort and at the heart of the democratization of quantum computing. It will ensure that we'll bring all kinds of expertise around the technology, accelerating its adoption. And this um, really stems from efforts coming from different directions. Uh, obviously, quantum hardware uh, developments uh, driven by the hardware providers that are very hard at work on this, um, uh, pushing the envelopes on uh, better, better fidelities, a uh, higher number of qubits and, and logical operations. Um, the other direction is really uh, coming in the realm of error mitigation and error management uh, and control. And so um, really trying to extract as much value as possible from the, from the noisy machines of today. Um, and the third effort comes from the algorithm perspective. So being able to come up with, with methods that allow us to reduce the, the resources required to tackle certain use cases. And hopefully uh, we're going to try to uh, come to a, a, a grounded uh, understanding of the realistic timelines for the development of these technologies, the challenges that are still uh, lying on the path, uh, kind of taking the average between the most optimistic voices and the least optimistic voices uh, in, the, in the quantum technologies uh, uh, scene today. To do that, uh, we need to learn from other fields instead of reinventing the wheel over and over. Uh, we need to bring non-technical people into the field, and we need to increase diversity in the workforce. You may need to be a bit more concrete, like on the quantum computing and also the quantum communication side. I think it's time uh, that we start being very prescriptive with what it can and cannot do, and also the resource associated uh, uh, you know, to that endeavor. There is scaling in size and efficiency of the system, but another challenge is to ensure we have a repeatable manufacturing process. One quantum computer in a lab is good, 200 in multiple data centers is better. In our case, we do leverage our ecosystem in order to accelerate this process as well. Quantum applications and more generally commercialization of quantum technologies is still a challenge that will become more urgent to manage as the different quantum technologies mature over the next few years. This is the main reason our ecosystem includes incubators, accelerators, VCs, and even the first quantum studio. So, to recap, many, many, many challenges to face in the next few years. Let's work together on solving them. Thank you. For um, the collaboration of the, in the collaboration and the standardization, uh, basically, given the complexity and the novelty of quantum computing, 2024 uh, will be the time to see an effort toward collaboration between industry player, academia, and government around the standardization of the practice. And five, and the most important in my mind, the last ingredient, um, that's the training. Upskilling will definitely be a trend that we'll talk about within the next year. Uh, as we'll get closer to the industry application, we'll need the subject matter expert to put their hands on the computers. That's our job to make sure that the quantum computing isn't, isn't just a matter of scientists, actually, and gets out of the laboratory. That's why PINK will be making effort in this direction through the creation of a center of excellence applied to the industry, which will bring together QKit, support, and hybrid computing power in the same place. Uh, on the quantum sensing side, uh, it's time that we start realizing that there's nothing really special about a quantum sensor. It's, it's a sensor like anyone else, and we need to start outperforming uh, the traditional competitor that we have in order uh, to make sure that we offer a value. On the other hand, uh, when you think of quantum safe cybersecurity, this transition is not an opportunity, it really is a necessity. And unfortunately, governments, organizations are not ready to face what will be a very long, very complex transition. Yeah. So all of this to say that we're at a place right now where adoption is key, and uh, that will happen by becoming a real industry where we create real value. So at the end of the day, uh, quantum for the sake of quantum is not really a selling point anymore. We need to grow up and we need to create value.